Uh, we want to engage now with each of you, our speakers as well. So we're going to move into our discussion round and we really hope to get a fruitful and meaningful discussion going, uh, answer some of your questions. So thank you everyone for your attention, for sending in your questions and your participation. Um, I'm very mindful of time. We have just about 20 minutes for Q&A and we have so many questions. So we will not be able to answer all of them. I will be selecting some questions to be answered here. But if you find that we still have more burning questions, please feel free to send them along our way uh, through social media platforms or website at any time. So um, I summarized uh, some topics from the questions. Uh, I'm going to start a bit macro first. And then after that, we'll do a bit more micro where the questions are a lot technical um, about testing and things like that. So we'll start with uh, something about climate change. There seems to be uh, an interest in what kind of green uh, building products, new green building products are available um, that are recyclable or would have a better positive impact on the environment. So I'd like to open this question first to everyone. Does anyone uh, who would like to respond to this? Oh, I mean, for if we in terms of facade works, obviously there are some new technologies that are out there. Um, but obviously these are kind of first generation. There's nothing really mature in the market um, in terms of materials. But I think, you know, when you saw Kevin's presentation there, I think the, 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 the use of green on buildings is becoming apparent uh, around the world, not just, uh, I mean, I know Singapore has a very good policy compared to most countries. And we're seeing something very similar being applied to, to Hong Kong now, uh, where it's a, a, a requirement for, for new buildings to adopt. Uh, green uh, but unfortunately we still have high carbon content with aluminium and glass manufacturing um, so we are seeing some new technologies in coatings um, more organic um, but again these are not mature products they haven't been used extensively um, yeah so but in terms of our sustainability drive and carbon reduction it's, it's, it's something that we have to look at in the next over the, in the future uh, it will happen over the next 30 years for sure but it won't happen in the next year so yeah, that would be my answer. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Yeah, I think this will be an ongoing uh, topic as we pursue our re re reduction of uh, impact on the environment. So thank you for your answer. And uh, related to that, there was a question on um, uh, how the climate has been observed to change specifically in Indonesia. Um, a lot of thunder and lightning. So the question from uh, this uh, participant was actually, is there any kind of test uh, right now that ensures safe, safe facade or protection against the danger of lightning strikes and things like that? And I would like to open up to any, <laughs> anyone. I think I, I, I speak that. first because uh... I haven't seen any standard yet, and uh, probably we will try to research on it and, and see, but I'm not sure with Mr. Simon. Mr. Simon maybe have more experience in testing and probably have some... some uh... Uh, okay, for, for lighting testing, uh, so far we don't have any standard or we have not tested any um, lightning or sat. Um, I'm quite sure the... Um, the building itself is taking care of the lightning striking strike. It's not on the facade itself. It should be any uh, thing that is on the building. Uh, so far, there's no test or standard I know of that can do any lightning test on the facade. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yeah. 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 Yes, can, can. Don't worry. Simon and Jonel, thank you for your answers. Um, we also have uh, some other questions uh, very specific to testing. Um, I, will, I will address to Jonelle first. Uh, there's a question on thermal cycling test. What is the criteria for pass and fail for this test? Okay, for the uh, thermal cycling test, it is about the performance of the facade uh, after the, the thermal cycling. Before and after, we have to do the water penetration test. And then we do the thermal cycling and then test again with the water test. So the performance will be that there should be 
no water leakage after the thermal cycling. So the thermal cycling is just only a, a uh, um, what you call this, uh, a, a procedure that would uh, create some effect on the facade. And after that, we have to do the performance of the facade again in terms of water penetration. Can, can I add on more to that? Yes. Uh, thermal, thermal cycling is normally um, test uh, most of the time during, during the um, in the uh, in a country that have um, winter and summer. So the um, the thermal cyclic at the minus eighteen degrees Celsius actually is humid winter time, and we have the uh, plus eighty two degrees Celsius is simulating the summer time. So we actually is cycling for three three. Uh, three cycles of eight hours yep. to simulate the uh, summer and winter time of the um, in the country. As she is to subject the to the facade to um, expansion and contraction during the change of climate. So after this uh, expansion and contraction, then you have to do a water test and also a air infiltration test to check whether this expansion and contraction during summer time or winter time, that um, will cause any damage to the uh, to, to the facade. Uh, that is one thing. The other thing is that after the thermal psychic test, normally there is a condensation test, and the concentration uh, condensation test is to check whether there is any condensation during the thermal thermal psychic. So uh, that is also very important that uh, you want to check any whether there is any condensation in the interior of the building or the facade that will caused by the, uh, the, the cold and, air, cold and uh, warm climate change. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Um, we're going to just have one more question about uh, testing. Um, for specimens with corner conditions, where is the propeller advised to be located during the dynamic water penetration test? Is it Normally, you will put at the, uh, the corner, the corner of the um the facade. I mean, the if there's a corner, normally we just put directly at the corner of the facade too, because the corner of the uh the, the facade is the the, the most uh, vulnerable or the weak, weak, weaker uh, conditions of the uh, design. So we normally put it directly at the corner to do the water dynamic water penetration test. And um, I'd like now I'd like to ask a question to Minister Srinivas. Um, there was a question, a recent one. There was uh, they saw the video uh, that during the fire outbreak there is a lot of smoke. Is there any fire insulation material to avoid this because smoke can suffocate a person, etc. Mr. Srinivas. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I was on mute. Uh, um, yeah. uh, so in relation to smoke, so when we do a fire resistance test, it is called as integrity and insulation. Uh, insulation is transfer of heat and uh, integrity is how, uh, how much a smoke transferring through the specimen that is installed or through the interface of the product. So um, it is very important to um, uh, when we are doing the fire resistance test, the smoke is also tested. So uh, the product has to work for both fire and smoke. If I answer the question. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And while we are speaking, uh, there was also a question on what is the difference between the stone and mineral wool? Um, it's, it's just a terminology, but stone wool is one that is commonly used. Uh, we also, uh, mineral wool is, uh, it's, it's a term that most of many manufacturers also now use, like uh, you have uh, rock mineral wool or glass mineral wool also being used. But uh, the, also the main difference would be if you are using a glass mineral wool, the melting temperature is less uh, compared to a rock mineral wool. But stone wool is the correct term which you refer back to rock mineral wool. Okay. Um... There's now quite a few questions coming in just for you, Mr. Shinibas. So just one more. 
uh, website, right? It's a one part system. Is it therefore easier and faster to install? Um, yes, it's uh, yes. By default, it is easier because the other uh, other scope in a two part system is you have it's same time as insulation, but you need to add a smoke seal and wait for it to dry. So as a dry system, it's very easy to install, fast to install. Uh, but importantly, you don't. It's the correct way of installing because in a two-part system, you cannot check if the compression is correct or the the orientation of the rock pool is correct. So dry system, yes, obviously very fast to install. Thank you, Mr. Shinas. I would like to ask uh, one more testing question that was uh, directed to Mr. Simon Chin. Mr. Simon Chin, what is your view for testing using CFD or computer calculation? Um, my view is that the computer calculation or, or uh, the CFD is computation fluid dynamics um, is um, for structural tests, yes, for structural tests, for structural, you can actually do a computer uh, finite element analysis to do uh, calculations for the uh, structural. And mostly the structural uh, calculations uh, versus the actual test result, they're quite close. But for the other tests like A, permeability and uh, water penetration tests, I found it would be very difficult to use the CFD to, uh, to simulate. You could use a CFD maybe to uh, simulate, to check the uh, design for the, let's say the, uh, for a pressure equalized system, the cavity that you use, want to use, how much space you want to use to create the, um, so that you have a pressure equalized. So, um, you still need to do a physical test for the water and air. For CFD, it's just a, maybe for the design stage you can use it, but not not to, for the test. You can't you can't really simulate the actual conditions. You do the air and the water test. For structure, yes, you can do. I hope you can answer these questions. Thank you, Mr. Simon. I think. Uh what we're talking about is also um, along the lines of a question that I wanted to ask, which is what are the gaps that are still existing between when you have the design and then bridging that into turning that into reality? So um, Mr. Kevin Jones would like to hear from you, a question from me, uh, which is uh, got to do with what you were talking about um, with you being able to use more digital tools to try to uh, reduce, minimize construction costs and rationalize the design. But even with these, what kind of gaps do you still see in um, bringing the design to life? I don't think there's gaps. I think there's just challenges along the way. There's a process in that you you got to first off understand the brief, understand the building you're trying to design, understand the constraints, the aspirations. And then from that, through the design process, you develop an outline design, then you build it up in detail. And now we use, you know, we've got 200 people here crashing out BIM models of this, that and the other. Um, but also you have to remember that it's ultimately the people who are driving the BIM and who are making the decisions and how we transfer that knowledge, get it into the testing, get it to people like Windwall, test it in reality, because you can only do so much. Uh, people believe now that you can do it all in BIM, press a button, it solves everything. That's not the case. It's still what's up in your head. And, um, and, and really, it's just kind of using technology to the advantage, but not relying on technology um, to, to allow us not to think anymore as designers and, and people who build buildings. It's still got to be the people who are kind of solving the problems. Um, and, and you go through the process, you minimise the gap. So right at the end of the process, hopefully you've solved all the problems. Hopefully it won't leak and it won't fall down. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what the testing is for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to slowly lead us to rounding off the discussion because there really are a lot of good questions, but um, we'd like to have them answered uh, later through our platform. So I would like to hear from each of you. So we'd like to go one round. 
what would you say are your hopes for the facade industry, all things considered COVID and climate change, etc.? Um, if you could summarize in one line, uh, try to do it in one line, what would that be? We'd like to go around um, so that we can hear each person's point of view. It's a nice way to end our session today. So who would like to go first? I can, I can go first if you like. My, my, I would yeah. sum it up as like, uh, get over lockdown, allow us to get out there and start designing buildings again and really be aware of, I think, the environment. That's the key driver as we move forward. That's got to be the driver, environmental considerations. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. I, I completely agree. As we see the change in the climate, and, you know, we're all feeling it around Southeast Asia, around the world. And, uh, you know, sustainability is, 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 is a big, big issue, you know, um, not just at a corporate level, but at all levels of society, including construction. So um, that's something that, you know, I hope we can change and turn around. Well, while I'm still alive, it won't change too much, but over the next 30 years, and the plan over the next 30 years is to do something different, right? <laughs> So yeah, that's my point. Um, uh, coming from a fire background, um, I think we build for the future, keeping in mind the environment and sustainability. So uh, using the right um, approach and building it for the right, uh, uh, building it correctly and installing them for the future correctly is important to have a documentation that oh, this has been done in this particular year. So that is again an important part coming as a fire and looking at the future. It's important that we choose the right products and install them rightly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shinka. Okay, uh, Mr. Junel. Yeah. Uh, for the testing point of view, I think we, I really appreciate the, the significance or the importance of the testing now. Like for example, when we did the test for the Japanese, it is, uh, they really appreciate that how we are able to accommodate the, the testing requirement that they have in order to be able to verify those uh, effect of the earthquake in Japan. So in that, in that case, the testing is very important to be able to verify the, 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 the design in order to accommodate this effect of the global uh, global change, especially also even the storms. Now it's getting higher, the pressure is getting higher. So the test is very important in, in now and in the future, considering the climate change. Thank you. Mr. Simon? Uh, Mr. Simon needs to be unmuted. Okay, sorry. Now one sentence. Testing is, is essential, like COVID or no COVID. What is essential, sorry? Testing is essential. Performance testing is essential. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we agree. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, I think what I've uh, heard from each of you is that uh, we really care. We care about in our environment. We care for our lives. We hope to live well. We hope to live long. And the facade, the design, all the way to the testing, to the products that we select, how we install, all of these are such important components to ensuring that um, we as a community in different countries can continue to live well. So thank you everyone so much for your sharing today and for your time. We would now like to wrap up our discussion. Um, once again, uh, if any of you have questions, um, please know that you can reach out to us and reach out to the speakers as well and through the website. Okay, that brings us now to the end of the conference. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. Thank you that you've stayed uh, an hour longer with us. We really hope that you've taken away valuable insights and gained more appreciation for the amount of incredible experience available here. We want to thank all our speakers once again, Mr. Paul Onslow, Mr. Simon Chin, Mr. Kevin Jones, Mr. Jonel Tajanera, and Mr. Srinivas Narayanan. 
Uh, thank you um, to the sponsor, SiteRight, once again. Okay, um, I have some things to shout about. There are other exciting webinars coming up, so please look out for it. Parafi's webinar number 13, the topic is CBIS9, which is the name of a building in Indonesia. It will be on Thursday, 8 July 2021. Um, what's more exciting, or just as exciting, is Glass Tech Asia X Parafi's second webinar. The topic will be on facade design and applications, international perspectives. It will be on the 29th of July at 10 a.m. Jakarta time. Um, more exciting presentations, again, different perspectives from architects and different, from different countries. Uh, please also check out our other BAO events. Information on BAO, BAO China, Digital BAO can be found on our website, www.glasstechasia.com.sg. Uh, please, uh, we would like to invite all of you to follow us on our social media, on LinkedIn and Facebook. And uh, don't forget to scan the following QR code later to take part in the survey. We really love to hear your feedback. So thank you everyone once again for your time and have a wonderful Thursday evening. See you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.